Hey everyone, it's Adios Amigo, and I'm starting a new series of videos called Bargain or Bullshit. And the basic premise is pretty simple. We're going to take a look at products, uh, compare what they promise on their advertisements versus what you get, and also what you get for the price in the end, and determine if a product is a bargain or if it's bullshit. So the first victim of this particular series, and I don't mean that to say already giving away the conclusion, but the first victim of the series is the Lox G A10 speaker amplifier, which is Class D. So the Lox G A10 claims to be rated for 60 watts into two channels as a Class D amplifier. And let's see if we can find it. It's a lot of promotional material, promotional material, promotional material, promotional material. Here we go. Specifications. They claim a total harmonic distortion plus noise at 0.08%. The output power at 60 watts into two channels at 4 ohms. And we're going to see if that's true or not. They don't put up 8 ohms, but we'll test that as well. Okay, I'm ready to go. We're ready? Yeah. Okie dokie. Alright. What's in the back? Is that for, uh, like a test signal or something? Yeah, it's got one kilohertz going in here right now. Gotcha. So, I don't hear anything. It's not on. You have to hit the button. This button? No, top one. There you go. Now it's on. I'm putting a low box because it's kind of loud. Yeah. All right. And let's turn this on. Okay, this is voltage, right? Okay. And this is frequency. All right. So it's 1,000 hertz right now. Yeah. So we're going to see what it does. Uh, it looks like this has common ground because I'm getting both channels. Good. All right, so... Even better. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to go... Uh, this is the volume control, right? Yeah. Let's see how much... Um, I'm going to max this out and use this to... On resistance? It. It's on 8 ohms. 8 right ohms. Now. You want to write this down? No, I'm recording. Okay. Yeah. What are you maxing out right now? The frequency? Well... I've set the volume to max. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. And I'm, I see. I'm going to slowly bring up the volume from using my generator. Okay. So, when it starts clipping... It's already clipping, I think. No, it isn't. It's yeah, it perfect. is. Zoom in. Where? I, th I think the top is already flat. I don't think so. Try, try zooming in. It's still going. See? Okay. It looks, it looks a little flat towards the top to me. There you go. Now it's clipping. See now that's a clip. That's a good clip, right? Yeah. Right there. That's the limit. Okay. So if you go any further than that, it just flattens out at the right, top. Right. And... What's that point? Huh? Okay, so it's twelve point five seven volts. Yeah, which translates to at eight ohms. Let's check the other channel and make sure those yeah, the other channels are done. Okay. So what is it? Twelve point Five seven five six. Five six. Okay. Divided by eight because it's eight ohms. Sixteen point seven watts. Okay. You don't have to write this down. No, I'm recording it. Okay. So and so that's at one kilohertz. Okay. Let's take it down to twenty. All right. And that's for both channels, right? Yeah. Per per channel. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is 20. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to... See that? Oh, my. See that? Yeah. So, before it starts doing that, because once it, it does that, your distortion just skyrockets to infinity. Okay? Yep. Like, right before it starts doing that, which is right around here. Yeah. Okay, it's 11.8. <clears throat> yeah. Right? It's moving around, but yeah. It seems what to is it? Around 11.7 11. 11. to 11.89. Okay. And divided by 8, 17.4 watts. Okay. 
Okay, now let's measure the distortion. We'll go here. That's the distortion. 0.14%. 0.14%? Yeah. THD? Yeah, it's THD. Let's go to the other channel. About the same, right? About identical. Yeah, pretty okay. close. All right. Now we're going to go to 20 kilohertz. Okay. All right. So we go... So those are your extremes. Right, the high and the low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See how funny it looks mm -hmm. over here? Okay, that's about as good as I can. It's, uh, let me go back to voltage. 12. Okay. So, I think that's a little 12. bit. 12.3? Yeah, 12.3. It still looks like it's distorting to me a little bit. Okay. Well, let's measure it. Yeah. So, it's 18.9. Yeah. And then we'll go to distortion. 0. 0.8. That's a, okay. It, the distortion will go up higher. Yeah. At high frequency. That's, yeah. That's normal. Not unusual. You, you want me to check anything else on this? Well, so based on what you're reading, mm. what do you what would the responsible power rating be for this? Well at eight ohms. It's the lowest number that I've I read to you so far. Okay. Now you want to measure it at four? Yeah, let's try four. All just right. to try so and be four. as we'll generous as thing. possible. Okay, we'll do the same thing. This is four ohms, okay? Yeah. Same frequency, 20 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz. All right. And then it's 0.6%. Uh, well, it's bouncing a lot. Yeah. You know why? Because this thing has no regulation. The digital switching amp. Yeah. So, see, it's changing all the yeah, time. Yeah, it's constantly around moving around. I mean, if you really want to be fair about it, you should bring it down so that it disappears. Like, down yeah. right there. That's the real power rate. Right. right? It's about 0.8 percent, yeah, 0.78 percent, right? And then the voltage is 10. 10. So 10 times 10 is 100 divided by 4, 25 watts. Okay. Okay. All right. So then back to 20 and 1,000 then. Okay. So let's go to uh, 20 because that's the other extreme, right? Uh huh. Right around there. There you go. Okay. And that's 11, right? Okay. So 11 times 11 is 121 mm -hmm. divided by 4. 121 divided by 4. 30. Okay. 30 watts. And uh, distortion. It's point... Point 0.3 to point 0.4? Yeah. With some that's, spikes. That's right. Yeah. And mid band is probably should do better. I'll go to mid band. This is mid range. All right. 1000. This is 2000. Well, I can make it 1000 if you want. Well, just because that's what we did for the 8 ohms. Okay. This is 1000. You think it would perform better, put out more power at 2000? Mm -mm. Okay. It should be the same. 1000, 2000 is going to be about identical. Right there, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 0.3% uh, distortion, right? 0.35, yeah. Yeah, 0.35. At 11, 11 watts. So it's 121. It's the same power. Yeah. 11, 121 divided by... With uh, the exception four. of 20, so it's 20 kilohertz, right? 20 kilohertz. Yeah. Now, I don't know higher. what this is rated, so it's, I'm very impartial to this. Yeah. So now you know what I could measure yeah. right now. The highest, or the lowest rating that we measured across right. both the Correct. 8 ohms and 4 ohms. Right. So you okay. would say uh, the FTC power rating on right. this is blah, 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 watts. Right. 20 to 20, mm -hmm. low channel driven. Right. Into 4 ohms or 8, eight ohms, ohms. Right. At so-and-so THD. Right. Okay. And for the THD, again, it's it's the highest measured THD. Correct. You're going to take the Correct. worst possible rating across Absolutely. the spectrum. You got it. Okay. Now you're getting it. Yeah. So we get back to the original question, which is, is the LOX G810 a bargain or is it bullshit? And the answer is not so straightforward. It's kind of fun to meme on the company for clearly overstating their power rating. And I, I can I can admit... 
that the we're measuring the power rating based on when it starts to distort so it's quote unquote usable power which is typically how it's measured or should be measured and they aren't really clear on their statistics as to how they got to their measurement if the thd measured was at the lowest point powered or if it was at max power it's very unclear and that's kind of the problem really with how a lot of manufacturers are displaying their data and there will be a follow-up one an episode to this basically where uh, a company rated their product and it wasn't perfect but at least their power rating was was on point uh, the, the the harmonic distortion was measured a little differently again but back to the logs g this is a 70 dollar stereo amplifier for 70 dollars i have to admit that it's actually not bad i've been using this product for about two years i've had it since september 13th 2019 and i've used it with uh my yamo s801s s803s i have some dayton uh was it b452 airs and some Sony SSC S5, I think, that I ended up giving to a friend. And it was able to power all of these in a small to medium-sized bedroom and fill the room with sound, and I didn't have a problem with that. And I don't... As long as you're not planning to power inefficient speakers or try and fill a large room with sound, although even that might be possible technically, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's a meh. It's a meh. It sounds okay. I, I don't have any serious complaints, but I've also never really pushed the volume knob much past 12 o'clock, which isn't really how you're supposed to judge the max specifications. So uh, as long as you're not planning on pushing it to the max, then it should be okay. But if you do need the quote-unquote 60 watts, you will see a lot of distortion. That's just... What it, what it ends up being. As we've discussed in the middle of this video, you're looking at, depending on 8 or 4 ohms, we'll, we'll go with 4 ohms because that's what they measured the 60 watts at. You're really looking closer to like 20 watts across the full range of frequency because the power rating does change from low to high frequency. So in that respect, I would say it's kind of crappy to advertise the specifications that they advertise and in that sense i'm very not happy with them but the product itself is fine for the price um, so i won't call it a bullcrap item and it's probably somewhere between meh and bargain there aren't a lot of you know two channel amplifiers that i've tested for speakers that i've enjoyed uh, i ended up giving the knob sound one of the knob sound models a try and it required a 3.5 millimeter hookup, which invariably had one of the channels die every time I listened to it, if it even came alive in the first place. So compared to my crap experiences with the knob sound, yeah, it, it, at least it worked. Both channels powered on every time and I got, you know, decent sound up to listenable volumes for my uses. So yeah, it's, it's meh. I would say crap advertising and specifications, but uh, in terms of overall price performance, it's meh. So, you know, if we have a meter between bargain, bull crap, bargain, meh, and bull crap, this would probably be meh. That's, that's, we're going to give that the old stamp of meh. So, yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this kind of stuff interests you. It kind of interests me uh, in the process of doing it. I was actually kind of excited to see how everything was going to turn out. Of course, it doesn't help that I actually have to rely on a third party to do the measurements for me. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not an engineer, so it's better to actually take it to one to get that kind of thing done. Anyhow, um, this is Adios Amigo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.